Hi guys, welcome to Jen's Crafts and Cakes. My chocolate chip cookie dough is in the refrigerator getting cold. We're going to make an apple fritter cake. So this recipe has three parts. You have the cake, you have the topping, and you have the glaze. So I will do everything step by step. Okay, for the cake itself, you're going to need two large eggs, two teaspoons of vanilla, one and a half cups of milk, I'm using whole milk, one cup of sugar, three cups of flour, one quarter teaspoon of salt, four teaspoons of baking powder, and a half a cup of melted butter. So we're gonna do this part first, okay? You will also need to set your oven to 350 and have a nine by 13 greased pan. Okay, so again, I'm going to add the dry ingredients first. So we need three cups of flour. And this is a recipe, again, you know me, I try a lot of different things that I've never tried. And this is one of them. Two. And three. Okay. So next we're going to need a cup of sugar. A quarter teaspoon of salt. Have my trusty colored measuring spoons. And that was a quarter teaspoon of salt. Okay, so we need four teaspoons of baking powder. Okay. Baking powder. Some people get mixed up with the baking soda. But this one, we need the baking powder. We're going to use four teaspoons. And if you get the can, it's got a nice little lip that you can scrape to level the spoon out. Okay, like this. There's two. Three. And four. So that was four teaspoons of baking powder. So we have all our dry ingredients in to make the cake part. I'm going to go ahead and get two large eggs. I see eggs are getting a little cheaper. I paid a little over three dollars for 18 large which i was impressed with one and here's my second large egg okay and we need two teaspoons of vanilla one two I have my liquid measuring cup. Okay, one and a half cups of milk. Okay, we're going to mix this together and then we will add a half a cup of melted butter to it. I don't want to go too fast with the mixer so it doesn't explode all over. It's a thick dough. Maybe when we add the melted butter, 
so I don't think it's a normal cake batter. Okay, so I'm going to melt the butter. Okay, so I have my melted butter. I'm going to go ahead and pour it in. Mix this together. So I have my nine by 13 grease pan. I'm going to put in this cake mix. Like I said, it's really thick, so I'm not sure. Um, it's probably got to be a little thicker for the apples being called a fritter. They say if you use a smaller pan than 9 by 13, that it will overflow. So if you don't have a 9 by 13, if maybe you have a couple different pans. And so for the apples, um, you have to peel and core and dice them. I ended up needing nine apples. I've already done them. I'm sure you want to sit there and watch. But I did show you what I use and how I do cut mine. Real quick, I did. We're going to go ahead and spread it in the pan because it's not a liquid one, so you definitely are going to have to help it. I'm very eager to try this because we like apple fritters, especially if they're from Dunkin' Donuts. Mm. Um, probably bad, but they're really good. Okay, so this looks like, just trying to make sure it gets pretty even. I know it won't be perfect, but make sure all the corners. Okay, so this is our cake mix. So for the next part, the topping, you will need four and a half cups of apples peeled and diced and cored. One cup of butter, one cup of brown sugar, two tablespoons of flour, and one tablespoon of cinnamon. But I like cinnamon, so I may add a little. Okay. So in another bowl, we are going to add the butter. the one cup of brown sugar, the two tablespoons, one tablespoon of cinnamon. The apples will go in last, but I already have my apples cut. I'm going to put the dry ingredients in first. So we need one cup of brown sugar. Okay, one cup. Two tablespoons of flour. Colored measuring spoons. Okay. Two tablespoons. There's one. <coughs> Two tablespoons of flour. Okay. So I did go to the store and pick up three bottles of cinnamon. I'm sure I'll go through it pretty quick, but I know I have some. Okay, here's one tablespoon of cinnamon. 
I might go half of more. So do I'm going to do a tablespoon it whoops and a half. Just because I like cinnamon. And apples and cinnamon just seem to go together. So I put one and a half in. But all this, but all these ingredients will be in the comment section. So we had the brown sugar, the flour, and the cinnamon. So we're going to have to get our butter, a cup of it. Okay, so my cup of butter, my two sticks, which makes a cup. I had to peel my butter out. You know me. Maybe it's already out of the package. And, and sometimes I have to peel the paper off. Okay. So now that we had the butter, the brown sugar, the flour, and the cinnamon, we're going to mix it. And then after, we will add the apples to it. So I left my butter out. So it's soft, but it's not melted and it's not ice cold. So that way I can work with it. Okay, here is what the topping looks like without the apples. Remember, you need to have your oven at 350. So now I'm going to add the apples. Okay. So again, this is supposed to be about four and a half cups. It took me nine apples. I'm almost thinking it says top the batter with this mixture. I'm thinking that we're going to have to put spoons of it in certain spots. Not sure. A lot of apple, but not enough topping, I don't think. But we'll see how it comes out. <laughs> I don't know, it almost looks like tuna fish. Probably shouldn't say that, but it does. Oops. Making a little bit of a mess. Okay. I will tell you the topping mix tastes really good though. You know how you get on your fingers, you just gotta try it. I will spoon it here and there and see what happens. I don't know. It might actually cover the whole pan. There's a glaze, but we have to bake this first. <laughs> kind of looks like potatoes and tuna fish. Okay. This is the item I use. I picked it up at Walmart. And it really does help me from cutting, like if you're just making the apple pie slices. You take your apple, I already peeled them. Sad thing is not one apple is normal size. So, and then you're gonna take this, put it over the center, and it's gonna core it away, push it down, and either twist that out or push it out. Of course, you will have to probably cut the seeds out, but this definitely saves me some time. Especially when you need like eight to ten apples. 
right? Peeling bites to start with, but there. And if you wonder why I have plastic under, it's just a lot easier to clean up. So the topping covered the pan, the nine by 13 pan. Um, you can actually, I still have half a cup of apple left. I don't want to overdo it, but it's totally covered. Um, so if you want to do four cups, that's good. Um, now we are going to put it into the oven and let it bake for 50 to 60 minutes. Of course, depending on your oven. Um, and I'm pretty sure the same way works. If you use a knife or a toothpick to see if it's done. And then we will make the glaze to put on this. So I have another 20 minutes for the apple fritter cake. And the outside started turning a little darker brown. So I put some foil on it so it won't burn. So the center finishes cooking. See my knife is still a little wet. Just like wrapping a pie crust. You take the foil on the outside, and then after a while, you take the foil off the pie crust so the ends don't burn. Okay, so it's been an hour. The first time I took it out was 40 minutes. Now it's an hour up, and I'm going to check. That's the apple juice there. So mine is done. We let it cool for 20 minutes and then we will fit the glaze on. We are going to make the glaze now so we can put it on in 20 minutes. Okay, so for the last part of this recipe, which is the glaze, because right now your apple fritter cake should be cooling off. We will need two cups of powdered sugar or confectionery sugar, five to seven tablespoons of milk, and one teaspoon of vanilla. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put the two cups of powdered sugar in, which I have about two cups left in this bag. Okay, so it says we need a teaspoon of vanilla. This is almost like a buttercream frosting, but not quite, because there's no butter in it or a shortening. So otherwise, it's just like the buttercream frosting. Okay, my teaspoon of vanilla. Okay. And we're going to go with five tablespoons to start. You're probably looking for a certain consistency to make the glaze. And if something happens that you put too much milk in, you can add a little bit more powdered sugar to thicken it up. So, so with my awesome measuring spoons, Two, three, four, and five. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and mix it. I start this on low because powdered sugar goes all over the place. Stay with the five tablespoons 
unless you want it thinner, go ahead and put your seven tablespoons in. But I like that consistency. It's not too thin. It's not overly thick where it will be able to go over the apple fair cake very nicely. So we've got 20 minutes to let the cake cool and we can put this on top. Okay, so it's been 20 minutes. Here is my glaze. So we're just going to And I'm sure if you really like the glaze, you can probably double batch it. This is what it looks like. So here we go. We have the apple fritter cake with some glaze. It might be kind of cool if you poked holes in the cake and poured in the glaze. I hope you enjoyed this recipe. Um, share, subscribe, and on the making of. Mint chocolate chip cookies.